Well, hello and welcome to Edison Light Globes video. I'm Phil Greenwood, and today we're talking about standard lamps uh, like this one here. Now, we recently did this job, a custom job, for um, a television show here in Melbourne. Um, and this light should be on next Sunday's episode of Dancing with the Stars. I'm not really sure, but um, we'll see how that goes. So, in building this for the uh, for the studio, we decided after a lot of questions from a lot of people, since we made it, we might try to attempt to make a standard lamp. Um, the problem with standard lamps is there are plug-in item and there are safety compliance issues and certification pretty much for every country. Now, for us being a small company, that's extremely expensive and at this stage, we've avoided doing that. So, what we decided to do was to build a system that gives us a 12 volt, so low voltage, head to the lamp, um, meaning that at 12 volts it's perfectly safe and so there's no need and no requirement for safety certification. Um, we've got a, a nifty little plug on the wall device that does 12 volts and that can be made to plug into any country's outlet, so it can be 120 volts, 240 volts, 220 for the UK, it can be a Swiss plug, any country. So that means we can sell the same product with the same components into any country we like. We can also knock it down for shipping and it can be assembled very quickly uh, once you get this uh, delivered. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to explain to you what the item will look like. It's delivered in this um, nice long DHL box which is a fantastic thing. It's quite heavy, it's about nine kilos, but at least it's an efficient thing to ship. So, the first thing we need to do is open this box. And even though we've never done an unboxing, this is more like an assembly than an unboxing. So, we're going to remove the, the box. Oh, first thing is we get a pair of gloves because this is DIY. Take out the parts. And then the main column. Now, this is already all wired up. It has a um, a driver on. This isn't the driver that we're going to use, but it, it will serve to explain how this occurs. Let's just chuck it over there. Oh, and we also get an Allen key. So, first thing we do is take this out of the way, get rid of the box, and then just unwrap the main section first, which is uh, the central shaft. I hope you're getting all that noise. Nothing like bubble wrap. So this is the central. Uh, this is the central shaft. Now this has got um, holes for the feet, and they are an Allen key uh, compression type fitting. So what that, what that means is very easy to put together. And we've already assembled the feet. And they come all ready to put together, ready to go. So I'm going to attempt to get this stick back off. Two wrappers. Now these have a um, special little dimple in the top which aligns to one of the Allen keys. I will explain that a bit closer, but for the moment, let's just get all these off. Ooh, we're going to have to repack this, aren't we? Uh, the other thing is, you'll see that uh, these feet already have felt tabs, so that it won't scratch your floor. I'm getting better at that. Right, one, two, three, four legs. So the first thing we'll do, we'll, we'll put the first one in. You'll see the, um, you can see it there, the, 
drilled in, in uh, what we call it a little dimple. And we're going to line that up with the first um, Allen key. Now, you can actually see right through these. So there's a hole right through the top of the Allen key, which will allow you to line that up. Except I can't see it. There it is. Oh, look, it's just in the way. So the first one's a bit difficult, I would say. Did I make um, ratchet Allen keys? Oh. We could use a drill head. Anyway, the second one, we line up again, looking down the hole, finding the, uh, the dimple. Oops. Maybe lean it over my shoulder. So what this will do is will align vertically these feet so that they don't lean over. I've just done that a bit tight on the wrong bit. Two feet. This is getting a bit easier. Third foot. You can sort of jiggle the foot around as you tighten just to make sure that it's actually going into that little dimple. That one's not quite, but there it is. Got it. So I feel it go down a lot further. I didn't put my gloves on. And the last one. Let's stir that up. Now, it's all together. You can just check that it's all these feet are vertical. These also rotate so that you can stop it from bouncing. So these are leveling feet. And you can just leave them where they are once everything's level. They shouldn't move, you can tighten them all up a little bit if you want. Now, I'm going to have to put it on the floor, but uh, the first thing I want to do is plug it in. The pack of it. Now, let me put this on the ground. So now we have the, the lamp holder here to hit. Now we, we are, are going to have options to have um, either a foot operated switch um, but we're also looking at a, um, a switch that we mount on the, on the pole, on the central pole. Um, it's just a bit, little bit more work at the moment but uh, once we have the stuff online, no doubt we'll have photographs and that is an option. Now, the product that we have had for a year or so now is a tw special 12 volt LED uh, vintage globe. So this is the one of our standard 12 volt globes, and this is normally used in bathrooms and situations where an IP rating or low voltage is required. So this is an available product, and it's an option below the product if you wanted to add this type of globe. Now that should just go straight on because it's on. There you go, Louis. It doesn't go on. I'll switch it on. Oh, you can switch it on. Oh, there you go. It's on. It takes a while for the uh, 12 volt to get through. But anyway, as you can see, it's a nice vintage shape. It suits the industrial nature of the lamp. But it's also a warm colour. It's pretty bright too. It's only five, I think six watts, six watts? Um, five watts. There you go. It's only five watts, so it doesn't use much power, but it's low voltage. So now, once we've got this, we can then assume it is possible that we might likely want to put on a lampshade of some sort. So we thought we'd show you a couple of things that we had in mind. 
we do manufacture these uh, club and round metal shades and that will go on with a shade ring on top to hold it um, and it becomes then an extremely industrial fitting. This one's a rusty finish. There you go. Not too bad. These can be um, obviously made any colour. So we've got a We've got a black, black painted version, so a powder coat version of that shade. You also do it just in a brushed steel version. Again, it fits okay. And because the lamp base is so heavy, these being steel don't overbalance the lamp, which is good. You might want to use a more traditional shade, which I think I've got. This is a fabric shade. Would be okay. You also could use a very large shade, and again, because of the uh, low centre of gravity, this will hold quite a large fabric shade and won't overbalance. Um, as I say, around eight kilos, most of the weight in the bottom. So, quite a large shade. You could also use something from our range of shade uh, cages. This is a cage similar to the um, Dancing with the Stars, which we have online. You could use a larger type cage. Actually, it's all right. <laughs> um, also, so you could use one of these shades if you have, have online. These are made generally to hang uh, this way down to sh throw light down. Uh, but you could put it in upside down and throw light to the ceiling. Looks a bit strange, but anyway, oops, that's available. Yeah. So there's a, there's a few options for coverage. I mean, a lot of people I think would just use these with a um, a regular bare bare globe, and I think that that would still look industrial, still look okay. Um, if we ever get to the stage where we've got a um, a mains voltage version of these compliant, you could then start using quite large globes on their own. There's a whole range of options then for the size of the globe without relation to a shade. Um, and that could be a good idea, but that will be further down the track as well. So, I'll turn it off. Uh, the last thing is this particular version that we've built as a prototype is uh, what we call raw steel, black steel. It's unclean. You could oil it um, when it's finished with a bit of uh, linseed. Uh, we, we clean them a, a fair bit, but they're sort of bare metal, so they can get a bit dirty. We can do this one uh, like painted black. We can also do it in a galvanised finish. And there's also a few other colours of painted surfaces that we can do. So hopefully you should be able to get an option that'll suit your taste. But I quite like just the raw black steel it's a good industrial look. Uh, so there we have it. If you're wondering what to do at home um, at the moment, if you've got a DIY job that you need to uh, finish or you've always wanted a industrial sort of looking lamp shade, uh, what do you call it, a table top floor lamp, uh, then this might be the solution. If anybody's get, got any other suggestions, anything they might prefer to see, in design or in sh uh, size, height, whatever, certainly let us know. Get 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 onto us through our website. Um, get in touch. Uh, we'll do what we can to uh, adjust this. Um, but uh, for now, uh, we'll see how it goes. It'll be online for sale very soon. But for the moment, we thought we'd do this video just to let you know where we're going. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe, like, do whatever you want. Share it with. Uh, your friends and family, I don't know. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye.